Hi, welcome. We all aware that the world human population is now booming like never before throughout written history. This definitely creates problem when it comes to ensuring our food security for everyone. My project might have a solution for that. Hello everyone, I am Adam and now I would like to share my research contribution to improve the rice yield in our country, Malaysia. For my study, I use rice as my model crop. Rice, a staple food for more than half of the world population and it's grown in more than 100 countries which 90% of the total global production is from Asia. Wow! We know photosynthesis is very important. Without it, no agriculture produce can be harvested. No photosynthesis means no food. Carbon dioxide or CO2 is very important substrate or ingredient needed to enhance photosynthesis. Simply put, more photosynthesis means higher and healthier plants. Moreover, enriching crops using commercial CO2 sources is expensive, exclusive, and not sustainable. Ha, huh, here I come with a simple solution for that. To achieve high CO2 condition, I take advantage of simple fermentation process using only three ingredients. Yeast, sugar, and water. Mix this all up in a bottle. Very soon, the brew will start bubbling up and voila! High, cheap, and sustainable CO2 for the rice baby. I use the high CO2 to boost up the growth of the rice seedlings during nursery stage. The whole project is very simple. One, I germinate and grow rice seedling in a DIY high CO2 chamber for about three weeks. Second, I transplant this seedling to the semi-field condition and maintain the rice using regular rice agronomic practice procedure. And third, harvest and analyze the findings. The theory behind the method is plants don't need exposure to high CO2 all the time. CO2 enrichment is known to one, improve crop growth, second, more biomass accumulation, and third, faster maturity. But I theorize that rice only briefly need high CO2 exposure during seedling stage before being transplanted to the field. The happy rice baby will remember this good nourishment time and the effect will last all the way until harvest time. Even though the rice doesn't experience high CO2 enrichment at the field for most of the time, does it work? Well, I use three disciplines in plant science to investigate this, namely plant imaging, plant physiology, and crop productivity. At the age of 25 days just before transplant, the CO2 enriched rice seedlings more superior in terms of total biomass weight, increased by 69%, stomata size increased by 46%, and the maximum photosynthesis rate increased by 16%. The best part is the yield component for the CO2 Average rice increased by 7 to 27 percent, even though the rice only received high CO2 for 20 percent of the total growth period. With this approach, CO2 enrichment derived from the baker's yeast fermentation can be a cheap, sustainable practice to enhance the crop growth and yield. This definitely applicable not only in rice but can be extended to other high value crops such as chilies, tomatoes, and salad vegetables. It's a beautiful day when the agriculture works for now and future generation. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye and see you again.